welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Today, I'm taking you back to the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 19th of November, 1564, Lord John Grey, youngest son of Thomas Grey, second Marquis of Dorset, died. OK, so he's not the Lord John Grey of Outlander. But he did have quite an exciting life, managing to avoid the fate of his brothers, Thomas Grey and Henry Grey, Duke of Suffolk, father of Lady Jane Grey, who was executed for his involvement in Wyatt's Rebellion. Let me tell you a bit more about this Lord John Grey and how he escaped the Axeman in 1554. John was born in around 1523 or 4, we don't know for sure, and he was the youngest son of Thomas Grey, second Marquis of Dorset, and his second wife, Margaret Watson. His paternal great-grandparents were Sir John Grey of Groby and Elizabeth Woodville. In Edward VI's reign, John was appointed Lord Deputy of New Haven, as well as being granted estates in Leicestershire, Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire. At some point, John married Mary Brown, daughter of Sir Anthony Brown, who'd served Henry VIII as his master of the horse. John and Mary had seven children, three sons and four daughters. Following the Catholic Mary I's accession to the throne, John became involved in the 1554 Wyatt's Rebellion, which was led by Sir Thomas Wyatt the Younger, and which sought to depose Mary and to replace her with her half-sister Elizabeth. John's fellow conspirators included his older brothers, Henry Grey, Duke of Suffolk, and Lord Thomas Grey. The rebellion failed after Mary rallied the citizens of London against the rebels, and the Grey brothers were arrested. John was arrested at Astley in Warwickshire on the 2nd of February 1554 with his brother, the Duke of Suffolk. John's brothers Henry and Thomas were both executed as traitors in February and April respectively, and John was tried in May 1554. John was found guilty and condemned to death on the 11th of June 1554. But John was saved from execution by the intercession of his wife Mary, whose brother was the Catholic Viscount Montague, a man close to Queen Mary. John was released in October 1554 and pardoned on the 17th of January 1555. Sensibly, John chose a quiet life away from court for the rest of Mary's reign. He returned to court on the accession of the Protestant Queen Elizabeth I in late 1558, serving her on her first progress. At New Year 1559, he gave the Queen a Mother of Pearl cup. Although he'd been pardoned, Lord John was still under attainder and so was suffering financially. After he pleaded poverty to William Thistle, Baron Burley, he was granted the Essex Manor of Pergo in April 1559, as well as further lands in Somerset. The new Queen also released him from the attainder and restored him in blood. Burley chose John as one of the four Protestant nobles to supervise alterations being made to the Book of Common Prayer. In 1563, Lord John's niece, Lady Catherine Grey, sister of Lady Jane Grey, was moved to Pergo under John's care. She'd just been released from the Tower of London into house arrest. Catherine had, of course, got into trouble with the Queen after her secret marriage to Edward Seymour, Earl of Hertford, in 1560. She'd managed to have two sons by the Earl during her imprisonment. John interceded on his niece's behalf, writing to Burley, pleading for a pardon. But unfortunately, in 1564, a man called John Hales wrote and published a book claiming that Catherine was Elizabeth's heir. The Queen reacted by removing Catherine from Pergo and imprisoning John temporarily. Catherine was imprisoned in the Tower of London once more. John returned to Pergo on his release and died there on this day in 1564, reportedly from gout. He was laid to rest in the Manor's Chapel. He left everything to his wife Mary, who he'd also named his executor. His only surviving son Henry was made Baron Grey of Groby in July 1603 after the accession of King James I. 
John's great great grandson was Thomas Gray, Lord Gray of Groby, who committed regicide by being one of the 59 commissioners to sign King Charles I's death warrant in 1649. Tomorrow, I'll be introducing you to a Tudor courtier and his invention, the flush toilet. Do make sure you're subscribed. You can click just there and that you've hit the bell so you don't miss that. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 19th of November, 1587, Henry Vox died of what was probably consumption at Great Ashby, home of his sister, Eleanor Brooksby. Henry Vox is a fascinating Tudor man. He started out as a precocious child and poet and grew up to be an important member of the Catholic underground. He was a Catholic recusant and priest harbourer, helping Jesuit priests in the Protestant reign of Queen Elizabeth I, both financially and by giving them a roof over their heads. Find out more about him and what happened to him in Elizabeth's reign in last year's video. You'll find a link to that in the description. Thank you for watching me today. I will be back very soon, but in the meantime, please do consider giving me a like and you can leave a comment if you wish. Thank you. Bye bye. Sensibly, John chose a quiet life away. <laughs> Are you going to move? No.